Good evening, YouTube. Mr. David Pope here, and I thought I'd take a few minutes and yell at my keyboard to address uh, Bionic Dance's latest diatribe about how us agnostic people should call ourselves atheists. The claim being that we only call ourselves atheists to avoid um, trouble persecution from our local community. Here's the problem with that. I'm not averse to the idea of calling myself an atheist. I've even considered the idea of meeting somebody for the first time and saying, Hey, I'm an atheist. And immediately addressing the caveat of, I'm really a theistic agnostic. I'm more of a universal pantheist. I don't have a problem with being called an atheist, and the reason why is... Yes, you are going to have bigots. You are going to have people that are against non-religious people for the sheer reason of being non-religious. And what I've noticed is that these people are going to be against you simply for calling yourself agnostic to begin with. Simply because you are not a Protestant Christian, they're going to be against you. Uh, even calling myself an agnostic and further calling myself gay-friendly, pro-Islamic, pro-immigration. They're pretty much against me anyway. So I might as well just be honest and, and, and come to terms with exactly what I believe or don't believe, as the case may be. Now, do I believe there is a God? I believe that there might be a God, but if there is a God, this God has to be far above and beyond anything that any religion actually teaches. Well, what I'm talking about is the problem that I'm seeing with Christianity, Judaism, uh, Islam, Buddhism, name the religion. The problem is that it is solipsistic in nature. There's only this earth, or in certain cases, it's only a portion of the earth with a crystal dome placed on top of it. Uh, and we know that's demonstrably false. If there is a god, then this god has to be the spiritual head of, of 350 million, billion, trillion hyper-intelligent sentient organisms on 50 billion, billion planets across 100 billion galaxies. And that's pretty huge. The problem is that either God is far bigger than we imagined, or we are smaller and smaller than we could have possibly imagined. And Carl Sagan described the Earth as a pale blue dot, and well, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with that one, too. We're not a pale blue dot. We are an electron orbiting about the nucleus of an atom with a couple of billion other uh, atoms comprise a barely visible glowing speck of dust known as the Milky Way galaxy. With a hundred billion other barely visible glowing specks of dust comprise the known universe. That is who we are. And there is no god of any religion that I can identify that comprises the immensity of what the cosmos actually is. And if there is a God, he has to be that big. Now, do I have a problem with religious people? Well, no. I have a problem with religious extremists and bigots that want to take my rights away from me because I don't believe the same thing that they do. I don't have a problem with bona fide, genuine religious people. As a matter of fact, some of my very best friends are very devoutly religious people. Um, most of the students at the university I attend are very devoutly religious people. And I, I can't speak for all of them, of course, but I can speak for most of the people in the uh, uh, teacher education program that I'm in. That these are people that want to use their religious beliefs in a way that produces a positive impact on society around them. Uh, even the principal of the first school that I observed with a couple of semesters ago was in fact also a minister at a local church as well as the principal of this, this alternate school for, for students with 
uh, behavioral problems. Somebody is using his religious beliefs in a manner that creates a positive effect on society. And that's what I look for. Whether somebody is Christian, whether they're Islamic, whether they're Baha'i. There's a small Baha'i community here in the Fort Smith area. I've met some of them. My Spanish professor was Baha'i. That's how I know this. I said, well, I don't know anything about Baha'i. I want to learn. said, well, we have this 19-day feast. Here's where it's going to be. Come by and talk to us. It was wonderful. Wonderful service. Okay. So it consisted of about uh, a dozen people sitting around in the living room, passing along a letter written by their religious organization, and we discussed it. And I didn't understand any of it, but talking about some of the friendliest people that you could ever meet. And yes, that is what I look for. I look for these people that say our religion is against racism, it's against bigotry, it's against re religious discrimination, and we want to make that type of positive change in society. Now, Now, Diana Dance and her little uh, uh, adopted brother have come up with this term called all atheists are babies, mm, or make that all babies are atheists. The idea that we start off atheist and over the course of time become religious through religious teaching, or religious indoctrination, and so forth. I'll concede that point. I'll concede the idea that we originally start atheists and have to become religious. And that is her starting point, having never been religious, having been atheist her whole entire life, that is the point that she tries to make with people. My only disagreement is, of course, is with us people that were religious and are now coming out of uh, religion into atheism or uh, agnosticism or non-religion, as the case may be that you do have to prove the non-existence of God. And as odd as that sounds, as uh, many people have said, you cannot, uh, you, you cannot prove a negative. You cannot disprove a God, nor, nor can you prove God. Scientifically speaking, in order to be accurate, in order to be intellectually honest, we are required to be agnostic to begin with because we have no absolute knowledge one way or the other neither proving the existence of god or non uh not proving the existence of god that's why i call myself an epistemological agnostic i know big college word come on university boy can't you come up with something better okay epistemology essentially asks Two important questions. What do you believe, or excuse me, what do you know, and how do you know it? Uh, an epistemologist does not care what you believe, or what you feel, or what you think, or you have a s strong feeling in your heart. Who cares? What do you know? And how do you know it? What evidence do you have? And if you cannot present evidence, then you cannot assume that you can ever convince anybody. You have a fundamental right in this country, by means of the First Amendment, to believe anything that you want to believe, and even express those beliefs in public, Set up your crosses, wear your t-shirts, read your Bible in class. We don't care, okay? Particularly for those of you that are trying to make a positive difference in society. Be as religious as you want to believe. The problem is, is when you try to force those beliefs on other people or try to even convince other people about your religion and you have no idea. You are clueless. You have no evidence. You can persuade people. You can show people in your Bible what we're not going to care either because if you have no evidence, they're just going to point to people to things in the Bible that make absolutely no sense. And it's going to get really, really rough on you. That's that's kind of the, the purpose behind my whole literally Joshua video series 
this is sort of take the things that are actually written in the book of Joshua, like Paul C. Hartley does for the book of Genesis, and show you just how ridiculous that some of these claims actually are, and exactly how non-religious people view it. Now, there's one last thing that I want to address, particularly with guys like uh, Paul C. Hartley, or Bionic Dance, or that mm, idiot that he was, that she was responding to, a guy that said he claimed to be agnostic to avoid persecution. In other words, he's a coward. He's also uh, really simplistic and intellectually dishonest, isn't he, Jack? Now, what I want to address with you guys is your usage of profanity in your videos. Now, does this have to do with uh, me being a student teacher, being this greatest social studies teacher that the world has ever seen? Well, of course it does. That is my basic for the, for the argument. I want to be able to honestly tell people that you can use YouTube videos for educational purposes. Now, can you film YouTube videos that are adult-oriented in nature that use profanity and, and objectionable content? Well, of course you can. You have a right to do so. But what I want to remind you is that parents that are out there are using the internet, television, movies, YouTube videos as babysitters, and they're not paying attention to what their kids are doing online. And they're going to watch your videos and it's going to be filled with profanity and they're going to get mad at you instead of getting mad at themselves for not paying attention to their kids. And as much as I hate to say it, I do want to use a bit of uh, self-censorship. Realize that there are going to be children that are going to be watching your videos. Not many of them, of course, given the nature of some of our videos. But is that an outside chance that people are going to be offended by offensive material that's on our videos? And we have to be really, really careful until we get to the point of our societies when, when parents wake up and realize that they have to monitor their, their kids' internet activity. Until that point in time, we're just going to have to do it ourselves. So if I can ask as politely as possible, and I can only reasonably request, of course, that you try to monitor what you're doing on your videos and try to curb some of the profanity that you're using. And that's really the only thing that I ask. But I'm a dance. You do outstanding videos, and I want you to keep up the good work. Every, well... I can't say that. I was going to say every one of your videos make me think, but half of your videos have to do with you chasing your little kitty cat around with a laser pointer, and that doesn't require me to think at all. But of course, the other ones do do make me think on a good number of things, and I do really do appreciate that that level of sophistication that you put in with some of your your really your videos that that go into the religious philosophy and the theology and it. They really are wonderful videos, and I highly recommend your channel if you cut out the profanity. Thank you very much for watching.